Hello my most amazing artists. Today we're going to be creating painted paper backgrounds that we can collage onto. To start out with, you're going to put your name and class code on the back of your paper and then flip it over. We're going to be painting the entire paper, so it's important that you have your name on the back of that paper. You're going to be using a color wheel to look for analogous colors to paint with today. Analogous colors mix well together because they are neighbors on the color wheel. So analogous colors are any two neighbors, and you'll see as you turn this color wheel, it shows what the two neighbors will make when you mix them together. So if I have violet and red, it makes red violet. I have red and orange, makes red orange. If I have orange and yellow, it makes yellow orange, and so on. As I turn that wheel, I can see what it'll make if I mix those two colors together. This is a good guide because if you mix any opposite colors on the wheel that are not two or three colors or neighbors, then it will probably make brown. If I took green and red from across the wheel, it would make brown because they're not analogous. They are complementary, which don't mix well together, although they might look good together. So today when you're painting, make sure to only use analogous colors, those two to three neighbors on that color wheel. That color wheel will be on your table, but make sure not to get paint on it. Then you're going to pick up a paintbrush and dip if it starts to drip, wipe it on the lip. You don't need the water to make this paint work, but just make sure that you wipe off on the sponge. Don't use that sponge in the bowl to clean. It is there to clean your brush and not pick up with your hands. I'm going to use big sweeps across my painting making sure that I'm using big brush strokes to paint quickly. The goal today is going to be to spread the paint out pretty quick. That way you're able to use texture tools to make textures into the paint. This paint is called acrylic paint. It is permanent, so make sure you're being very careful when you're painting and putting a piece of newspaper underneath your work surface. I started out with a blue green, and then I'm going to go to the blue after the dark blue. Now I could choose any other color that's the third color on the color wheel. I could go purple, or I could go with yellow, because they are all neighbors. Now if you pick two neighbors, they definitely will mix well. But sometimes three don't all mix well together, but they will if you put them in the order. That's why it also works well if you, do, if you wanted to do rainbow, you could do all the colors as long as they're in rainbow order. However, if you did just take your brush and mix them all together, it would still make brown. But neighbors on the color wheel do work well together. So these neighbors that I have, if I were to start to mix them or blend them side to side, it would mix well and it would look very nice. So now I'm taking my texture tool and seeing what happens when I do swipe and blend them together a little bit. Now I noticed that the first one that I painted started drying already. The only one that's really picking up paint and making texture is that purple that I had just painted. So now I might wanna add a second layer, but notice, ooh, if I don't want wash my brush in between, I'm going to get purple all in that teal paint, which would not be cool for somebody who is not choosing to use purple. It would ruin the paint for them. So please make sure you're washing your brush well in between until you get that color. You wouldn't want to ruin all the paint trays because acrylic paint is expensive and I don't have a whole lot of it. Now you'll notice as you layer on that paint, it will make awesome texture. When the texture or the paint is wet, it'll make a better texture with the texture tools. There are all different things that you can try and different patterns. You never have to worry if you don't like something because you can always paint over top of it again and then redo it. It's all about trying and experimenting with, with different texture tools today. I would suggest using a few different ones and painting over a few different times. Now if you had let a first base color dry, you could paint over top of that color of your whole paper with another color. Then while that paint on top is wet, you could go ahead and make different textures into it and you would see the color that was underneath when it scrapes away. That's something that I did not try because I decided I was going to layer paint on top instead of pulling it from underneath. So now that I already have some texture and some colors that blended well together, I could use a different color that might not have been an exact neighbor on the color wheel, like yellow. I used all cool colors here, but now I'm gonna go across to the warm. It still works though, because yellow is next to green on the color wheel. I'm going to use one of those rolling tools to make polka dots on my painted paper. But instead of painting, the roller with the yellow, whoops, I didn't wash my brush good enough and just mix that all together. I'm going to quickly try to take care of that with a sponge and then a paintbrush. If this happens to you today, please call me over as soon as possible or do what I just did and scoop that color out so that we don't ruin the whole color. If I were to just mix it all together, it would turn green. That was a close one, it almost did. 
But if I want to use my texture roller, instead of brushing it right on the roller, I'm gonna brush some on my newspaper. Then I can roll it into the newspaper to get that color onto my roller. A fancy name for a roller is also called a brayer. It's a tool for printmaking that we use to roll ink, or in this case, paint, onto a print. So this will make all different kinds of polka dots on my paper. I'm gonna roll it in the newspaper, that way it gets a nice even coat on it. Make sure that if you're layering different colors and different textures that you let the paint dry in between. I wouldn't want to over roll with this texture tool because then it would just start to eventually mix all the colors together and become muddy. I want to see all of the amazing bright colors, so I'm going to let this dry in between before I do anything else. I could also say that I think I've done enough to it and leave it alone. Or I could try out some different simpler tools like a toothpick and see what happens when I scratch into that paint just to experiment. Today is all about trying all those different texture tools and different colors. Just make sure that you're not wasting the paint or paper by always using analogous colors when you're mixing the paint. Today, instead of mixing our paint together like we did with our hair colors and skin colors, the goal is going to be to layer the paint in different ways that you can create some awesome painted paper with texture on it. Today, you could try different things, different prints with different sponges, with toothpicks, with cotton balls, with sponges, again, anything you want. I would recommend that if you're using a tool that you paint on the newspaper and then press that tool into it instead of painting the actual tool. It'll work a lot better and it'll leave the tool cleaner. Now today we probably won't be cleaning our tools, we're just going to let them dry before the next person uses them. That's why it's important not to get them wet so that they have time to dry. Acrylic paint does dry really quick, so it'll be okay for the next person to go. Just make sure that if they did use a cool color and you're using warm colors, for example, I wouldn't want to go use this green one on my warm colors. That would probably show up more like brown. If I don't like the kind of print it made, don't worry because you will be able to do more than one painted paper once you finish this one if you have time. Always do your best work though and then put it on the drying rack as soon as you're done. I would leave it nice and simple after you've done a few different printmaking techniques. That way you don't overdo it and start getting a muddy paper. When I am done, I'm going to carefully pick up my entire newspaper and bring it to the drying rack. That way I make sure that it doesn't fall on the ground. I'm going to put my lids on my paint if I'm done painting for the day so they stay nice and wet for the next class to use them. Now I'm going to pick up my newspaper with two hands like the most important pizza I've ever delivered and deliver it to the drying rack with my hands on both sides. That way I do not drop it and none of the paint falls off. Once it's on the drying rack, I can use an art wipe to clean my hands and then my area. If I was doing a great job today, I shouldn't have a whole lot of paint on my table because that paint should have been on the newspaper. Don't forget, you can also paint your newspaper and we could use it next week when we are starting to cut and glue onto our final pieces. All right, awesome artists, have a great time today and enjoy the mess, but make sure you clean it up.